Howdy. Let's talk about black and white film. There's a lot of it. So let's narrow it down just a bit and only pick two of them. But out of these two, which one's right for your photography? Why shoot one film stock over another? Is one better than the other? Can you even tell the difference between them? Does it even matter? Today I say we put them to the test. We shoot them in a bunch of different light. We'll overexpose them, we'll underexpose them, we'll push them. We're not gonna pull them. We're not doing that. Sorry. And as a final test, I say we print these two films in the darkroom and see how they compare. But first, we need to make some jello. So let's pretend these two jello squares are the film emulsions under a microscope. The fruit representing the silver highlight crystals, the light sensitive part of the film, and the jello, I guess representing the gelatin that the crystals float in. The T-Max 400 has what's called tabular grain, also known as T-grain. All the light sensitive crystals are basically the same size, are flat, and run parallel with the film base. HP5 is a different story. It has a classical film grain and is basically the exact opposite. All the light sensitive crystals come in different shapes and sizes with no real pattern in mind. And this is one of the reasons I love shooting film. You get a yummy, delicious, and most importantly natural grain in your image. But what I'm wondering about is how these two film stocks affect the feeling of your photos and is there any significant difference between them. So let's go take some bad photos and find out. So to give this experiment a fighting chance, I borrowed my brother's and sister-in-law's Canon AE-1s, both with 50 millimeter lenses. We loaded one up with the T-Max and the other with the HP5. And to keep y'all in the loop, all the films were developed in Fuji black and white film developer, scanned with a Sony A9 and converted with Negative Lab Pro, left untouched other than some dust removal. I figured we'd start off with the least artistic thing, a color chart. We shot a running scale from two stops underexposed to two stops overexposed. And right off the gate, it's pretty obvious to tell which one is which. The T-Max feels like you took the contrast slider and slid it way up. While the HP5 is much more washed out. HP5 doesn't make the colors pop like it does in the T-Max 400. But enough color charts, let's have a little portrait session. The grain is much more noticeable in the HP5, which is to be expected given the classical grain structure. And I guess the branding on the T-Max 400 box checks out because it's sharp. You don't realize how sharp until you compare it next to the HP5. The difference in sharpness is pretty significant. I let my little brother try on the cowboy hat for this one. The T-Max crushes the hat quite a bit in this shot, compared to the semi-washed out situation going on in the HP5. Which I don't think is a fair comparison because I think the sun popped out during the HP5 shot. Probably making the hat feel more washed out than it actually was. But now let's take a shot in some high contrast scenarios. I first metered for the shadows, and there's not too much difference going on in the highlights. 
but when we start looking at the shadows we start losing some detail in the T-Max film while the HP5 just holds a little bit longer. And when I metered for the highlights, this just got more extreme. But how do these two films compare when we push them two stops? And what better way to test pushing black and white film than over some mini bean and cheese burritos? Plus, you gotta keep the crew happy. Looking at these shots, not much is different. They both get a little more contrast, respectively. And while the HP5 does have more contrast, I still feel like it's nowhere near the contrast of T-Max just shot at box speed. Also, let's just take a moment for this shot. I'm pretty stoked on this one. Now, looking at the grain, it does feel like the HP5's classical grain goes to a whole nother level of grainy when push two stops. While the T-Max with its T-grain doesn't seem to be affected too much. Again, staying on brand as the world's sharpest film. So, after getting the first round of photos back, I was a little worried. There were some images that were just way off from each other, more than there should have been. Turns out the 50 millimeter lenses I was using were not the exact same. And I'm betting the two shutter speeds in the cameras were not synced up either. So for this next round, we're not taking any chances. We got rid of those shit Canon cameras and their mismatched lenses and grabbed a camera that wouldn't let us down. We set up some lights in a studio setting. That way we don't have to worry about the light changing on us between the two rolls. Now in this setting with this lens, the HP5 gave a little better performance in bringing in some contrast. When scaled in, you can see that it has a little more grain and a softer feel to it, but maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want the furthest thing from the world's sharpest film. The T-Max is acting the same, especially in these high contrast scenes. In the hat, we lose a lot of detail compared to the HP5 and it appears to make him look a little more tan. So you can skip the tanning beds if you want because T-Max has got you covered. It feels like the HP5 can handle these high contrast scenes a little easier than the T-Max 400. And if you really zoom in, you can see those grain structures at work. Very similar story in this one. HP5 is much more forgiving and able to hold it all, but with the T-Max, I probably should have opened up just a bit because it feels just a tad underexposed. But I suppose we live in a digital era and I can just fix this in Lightroom. And no one would know. But what if you remove the digital aspect, keep the whole process analog? Then that fix ain't so easy. Now, keep in mind, I ain't no darkroom printing master. I'm working with a portable hobbyist enlarger and with little to no experience. These negatives were both shot at box speed and I'm printing on Ilford's multi-grade RC Deluxe Pearl paper. And how did they turn out? Boom! Well, they're following the same patterns as the digital scans. The HP5 is more flat with more grain, and the T-Max has a finer grain, but far less latitude. Again, keep in mind, I know very little about the darkroom, but I'm willing to bet that the HP5 is much easier to work with in the darkroom, being able to take all the different tones of the image and get them to go where you want. While the T-Max film is much more concrete on what it is, but again, I'm no pro in the darkroom, so if you have some tips, please leave them down below because I need it. So which one's right for you? HP5 could be great if you're just casually shooting and just want to capture the moment before it passes. Plus, with its classical grain, it gives a very nostalgic feeling to the photo, almost like a dreamy memory. T-Max could be great when you do have time to be fumbling with your camera and really dial in those settings to really get that perfect exposure and a very crispy image with lots of contrast. Plus, the T-Grain will deliver on the world's sharpest film promise. 
For me, having done all this, I now feel like I can be much more intentional with my art, if you can even call it that. It feels like I have very little control over what happens in my life, so now feeling like I understand these two films, I feel like I have some level of control back, or at least in my photos. That's it. I'm done.